The goal today is to get in some irrigation systems, water systems, so this becomes a thing of the past, standing out and watering, trying to water corn and other stuff. So we're gonna get in on the garden and start putting in some irrigation drip lines. So as we said in the last video, one of the projects we really want to work on is getting an irrigation system in. So previous owners uh, had tried to, I think they had a business up here selling, raising and selling moms in this whole area. And that's why they put in greenhouses and a lot of other infrastructure. But they left a ton of this uh, really thin walled one inch um, plastic drip line pipe, irrigation pipe. We left a lot of it, so we're gonna reuse it. We ran water from over by the greenhouse and stubbed up over here. I probably should have done this taller, but so we've got a water timer that we're gonna put on here. This is just an orbit timer, pretty simple one. And then have this um, pressure reducer, water pressure reducer, which we can adjust so that it really just drips. And so they'll just run, go over, terminate with a cap at the end of the line and have a really simple, pretty cheap and easy system for irrigating our garden. And then we're gonna do it in a lot of other places as well, the corn and other, other things. So here we go. This is just a plug that goes in the end and just tighten this up with a stainless steel hose clamp. So this, this stuff is really easy to cut. All I gotta do is just take any knife, go through there, and we're gonna take out three more of these. Use a T pipe fitting. Let's put the clamp on first. Push that on. And then we're gonna reconnect the other end. This is gonna go further down. This one's already capped at the end down there but as we add more rows we'll be able to just cut it and add more drip line off of here this one's tight and, uh, and then the same thing we'll just get this where it's supposed to go going down here basically in straight line with the bed go up to about that point on the, the hose you can cut this with scissors, probably heavy duty scissors or something like that would be fine to cut this. Loosen it up just a little. Push it on. That's it. All right. Now we're going to poke some holes in it by the plant. So really you can use anything but got this little tool so what we're gonna do is just poke and you can set this over here I mean the blue line doesn't matter where where that is but what we'll do is just poke a hole in it and that ought to be enough to give us a dribble all along here is to just poke pop some holes in here we're not gonna buy you can buy lines and stuff like that. We're gonna make, basically just make this like a, a drip line with the hose and we've got enough of it. We're not gonna buy things to stub in there and pay extra. We'll just have it drip out. So let's turn on the water. And we finally caught a swarm in one of our swarm traps. So I have to get these guys down and into a proper hive body. 
We didn't catch this swarm right when they first moved in, which would have been ideal. And they have been foraging and going out. So uh, the forager bees have oriented themselves to this swarm trap in this location. So a few things here. If you move a swarm of bees, the rule generally is you need to either move them less than three feet or more than three miles. And where we want to move them is back into the bee yard, which is probably where they came from in the first place. So we're just gonna move the swarm trap, set it in its new location, put a lot of stuff, branches and things like that in front of the entrance, and then force them to reorient to the new location. Hopefully it will work and there won't be a lot of forager bees going back to this spot, but we'll see how it goes. This is where we're gonna keep the bees in the apiary is up here. It's a pretty simple matter of just piling up branches in front of this hole so that um, it forces them, feel like if there was a storm or something came through and knocked branches down so that when they come out of here, it's not gonna make it so that they can't get out, but that they are gonna have to figure out how to get through and around all of this. So they'll be able to come out, they'll go around, should fly around here in circles for a while, reorienting themselves back, themselves back to this location instead of going to the old location. And then really it's just a matter of going back in here and opening up this, the entrance. Going ahead and taking, a, just going to go ahead and move these into their uh, their new home, a proper way. So here's the swarm. This is some old comb that we put in the swarm trap. And it worked. It worked. <laughs> This was, these were frames from a hive that had, had wax moths. And it looks like inside here that they really cleaned out the frames, all the junk out of it already, pushed it down to the corners of the cell trap. I'm trying to get more bees on this other thing. We'll go up and see how many are left. I don't think it's worth driving. Miles to go. 
let's go see what's left up in the tree. And we'll take this with us. climb right on to a frame. These are the remnant few that haven't figured out the new location. We'll come back again tonight and check later and make sure. They're landing on it. You see them? Yeah. Come on. Alright, well, put these last few in. So, the swarm decided to at least those foragers wanted to go back to that spot but this was a another hive that we had temporarily just set up back over here uh, behind these and we wanted to relocate it start a new row and you can really see that there's no bees over here so all of them they relocated uh, right here just this short of a distance just by putting the branches and stuff in front of here and it doesn't seem that any of them are trying to go back to that spot over there they just stayed right here but the swarm well they wanted to go back to that tree that distance away some of them anyways so hopefully we won't have too many that keep doing this gonna put a super go ahead and give them a super on here and close it up and then we'll keep uh, moving if we have to we'll just go out at night catch put a frame and just kind of let them walk on to and uh, walk on to it and then move them back out here and shake them in so all right that's it last little thing for this video Finally got to go start my venom immunotherapy treatment for honeybee venom allergies this morning. That has been a, what, over a year that I've been trying to do this. There's a long story behind this. I'm gonna save it for a separate video, but the good news is I got to go this morning. It should, hopefully, it's like a 99% chance that it should give me not immunity, but near complete desensitization to honeybee venom. So that would be fantastic so that I could get back to working with bees, which I love, as one just flew right by my head. And there goes another one. I think they're coming out of that mimosa tree and going directly over to the beehive. So I am literally in the bee line. I can see, because I can see them zinging by me going to the hives. <laughs> so um, anyway, so that was, that was exciting, it was good to finally start to uh, get that going. I've been anxious and trying, but there's been a lot of other tests and things. Like I said, I'll explain it in another video in the future. But I think that's it. Obviously a lot has happened in the garden and a lot is going on. It's just so good to get back out here. And I hope wherever you are, people are watching this, I, I hope really the summer, if, if it's summer where you are, that you're getting out, uh, at least just getting out into nature, to go for hike, go for walks, just enjoy and look at it, uh, but maybe even more to be getting out, putting in a small garden, growing some things, maybe working with bees, getting chickens, doing something just to get out, uh, even if it's on a very, very small piece of land. It's just, uh, I don't know, love it. Just really enjoy, especially early in the morning, late at evening, to get out here and uh, just to work on the, the farm. Such a blessing. So. All right, well, as usual, I hope everybody's doing really well. And until the next video from here at St. Isidore's Farm, take care. God bless.